I'll wait another minute for other people to join. Share if you're in here, because I only see three people. But it showed more people when I closed the other one, so who knows. All right, I'm just gonna start. Okay. I have been driven nuts for the last few days. Longer off and on, but the last few days have made me wanna rip my hair out, if I'm being honest. It drives me crazy. The trust people have been doctors and the government to be honest but this is solely going to be about health and wellness and fitness and mind body spirit the trust people have in doctors to make decisions that they can make themselves is ridiculous To not believe that you can do something without a doctor telling you and to get frustrated at a doctor when you can't because you haven't tried hard enough is ridiculous. And I'm not talking, I mean, we could make the argument for the more serious illnesses, fine. But I'm talking about disabilities and even common cold, you know, bronchitis or whatever. Doctors will shove things down your throat, even broken bones. For me personally, how am I supposed to trust a doctor who told me, well, my family at the time because I was young, that the hip surgery that I got was 99% effective and my hip would never be out again and here I am 32 years old and it's out. I'm not complaining, mind you. I'm not going to be one of those people that I've talked to the last couple of days who complains about that. But I'm not going to sit there and think that, oh, a doctor is going to cure me. Mm -mm. If you can find ways to cure yourself or even help yourself, you need to be doing it. And I'll tell you right now. You could take all the medicine in the world for all the things in the world, but if your mind is fucked up, it's not going to work because there's resistance to it. I'm telling you, I swear, like, if you're going to sit there and go, woe is me, my life sucks, doctors told me this wasn't going to happen, or, you know, I should be like everybody else, which I hear a ton in the disabled community. Oh, I should be able to do this and that and blah, blah, blah. And listen, like one of my books says, everyone's different. Get over it. Literally everyone. Everyone with your disability, without your disability, everybody is different. I don't care if on paper you have the exact same thing as somebody else. Your chemical makeup is different. So you're going to react a different way. You have to do what's right for you. If you find the things that you're doing that doctors are telling you to do is not helping, you would kind of be an idiot not to try something else. I mean, it's a very, very simple concept. And I understand that a lot of people have been brainwashed or not exposed to certain information but as adults, it's up to us. You shouldn't need the permission or to be handheld to find the information. If you're watching this, you have all the information that you could ever want at your disposal. Look for it. Yeah, some things are going to contradict each other. I get that. But that's because everybody's makeup is different. For me, even the simplest sinus and allergy medication makes me drowsy. Makes me go to sleep. Forget pain pills. I refuse. Uh-uh. I've taken once for a UTI when I was a kid, and I was 
asleep for five hours. Never again. If I get sick, it's garlic and essential oils. Now, for things such as cancer, because that one was thrown at me earlier. Why do some people who believe they can get better get better and some don't? I'm not afraid to say that I don't have the answer to that. I'm just going by my experience and people's experience in my life. And what I can tell you is that more times than not, the natural cures, especially the ones that the government does not want you to know about, are what work. My aunt is, God willing, becoming proof of that. And I just feel like if you're, if you're going to have so much resistance, so much negativity to anything other than what you've been told that you're in the same sentence telling me is not working for you, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're not, you're closed off. You're not even willing to try. And that negativity is also affecting you. I had somebody today ask me, oh, you mean to tell me just thinking more positive will help? Yeah, it will. Because if you want science-backed facts, that's backed by science, the way that you think. Okay, experiment here. Think of something that makes you angry or anxious right now. You got it? Okay. How does your body feel? Did you tense up? Did you get a little sweaty? Did your heart race a little bit? If you really think about it, if you think about it long enough, that happens. Those are organs in your body. Your thoughts and your emotions attached to those thoughts are now affecting you physically. Think those shitty thoughts long enough, they start to really deter your health. And then here you are, 20, 30 years later, so indoctrinated with these thoughts that you think are just there and natural and you had nothing to do with them. And you're like, okay, somebody else fix me. Nobody can fix you unless you fix what's going on up in here and in here. Nobody. I I, like, I don't care. <laughs> Nobody can fix you. I don't care if you're going to pay me $100 million. The empath in me will not work with somebody who is not willing to do the work themselves. Sorry. I can't. I can't. No matter how guilty I feel with what you're going through, because I do feel for people who aren't in a place that they believe that they can get better, I just, I so believe in this stuff, but you have to experience it for yourself. There's plenty of proof out there of people who have either healed themselves, used natural healing, had a doctor who believed in natural healing, and it all begins with you. It's literally all connected. You might not realize that the thought you had when you were seven years old is going to affect you when you're 70, but it will. And that's what makes it harder because you could be a different person in your 70s. Or at the beginning of your health journey when in the beginning you said, oh, this isn't going to work, I'm going to die. Right? You could be a different person and not remember that your initial thought that had to get unwound from within is now different. So your thoughts can be different, but that initial thought pattern that started is still there somewhere. And it has to be undone. Which is why there is a need for therapy and life coaching and, you know, spiritual coaching. Because you have to get to the core belief that you're having within yourself. Now, there's people who are evidently self-loathing, negative pieces of crap, 
right now and I'm not afraid to say it because they just if you're putting that negativity out into the world and then expecting positivity back or just expecting to magically have a great life it's not gonna happen I'm sorry I don't know what that means oh okay sorry it, it is I mean It's just, it's very frustrating to me to have people who were like, well, that's another one. I, I've never been told this and I've, I've never heard this before. So you're going to just refute it and keep doing what you're doing that you know is not working. Does that make sense to anybody? Anybody? No. Sorry. It just doesn't make sense. There's things that make sense and there's things that don't. It is completely nonsense. Insanity, literally, to keep doing what's not working and expecting it to work. And then, oh, that's that's another one. I'm sorry, but a lot of people who need caretaking, i.e., Disabled people, for example, they think that everything should be done for them, whether it's doctors or people in their lives. Okay, um, you're just supposed to magically get better because somebody's supposed to intuitively know how you're feeling and I'm sorry, if one person with a disability can manage to thrive, and I'm not talking about me. There's people who are a lot worse off than me, and there's people who are thriving where I want to get to, okay? So I'm somewhere in the middle right now. I know where I want to go, I have that direction, and I'm getting there. But there are people who are like, well... The doctor did this to me back then, and if I would have known this back then, well, you know now. If you know now, do better and go forward with that. And don't expect anything to work if you're not willing to work with it. And if you're not willing to modify. There's a big misconception of... Thank you, I really appreciate that. There is a big misconception of living a normal life as a disabled person. Because it's very ignorant to believe that normal people don't have to actually watch what they do and eat and think and believe and, you know, so why shouldn't the disabled? Because a doctor's supposed to cure us with a surgery? No. We have to, if, if something is affecting our body, let's say something common in the disabled community, I'm sorry, TMI, is a lack of control when going to the bathroom, okay? Now, if you know that you have to use something that's going to help you go to the bathroom, whichever way, one or two. And you're experiencing a difference in how you go and what happens. You need to self-examine and realize, okay, what have I been doing different? Okay, what could be going wrong? Even if I've been doing the same thing I've been doing for 20 years? Okay, something is different, okay? And anybody with or without a disability is going to modify when something is affecting them. Like, you could be fine for 40 years out of your life and then become a diabetic early on and what are you going to do, just keep eating like shit? No, you're not. Unless you have a death wish. 
but if you like if you want to actually live well live as a they use this term a lot with disabilities, a healthy person living with a disability. Well, if you want to live as a healthy diabetic, you follow the rules. Okay, so somebody who gets, say, a kidney stone or somebody who is in a wheelchair but needs to, you know, stretch because their circulation sucks, they're not going to sit as a couch potato. Well, they shouldn't. Somebody should throw their ass on the floor and make them stretch if they have to. But you know what? It shouldn't be up to anybody else. It should be up to you to realize something is not in alignment and what can I do to fix it? Like I said before, there's definitely contradictory information on the internet. One site can say something works and another can say something else. But it's up to you to experiment for your body. And if you don't, you'll have nobody to blame but yourself. I'm sorry. You can't blame the world for your problems. If you're not willing to face them head on. And use the excuse that you're different and life screwed you over and blah, 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 blah. blah. Save it, please. I'm just really irritated. I'm really, really irritated. Because you can have this conversation so much with so many people and one moment they'll be so open to it and literally five minutes later, all of their previous excuses and yes, their excuses come back. And like I said before, I get it. People may be new to this information, may be leery of it, may not believe it. People may not have been exposed to it. People may have been taught the complete opposite and aren't around people who will expose them to it but you have to be willing to have an open mind if you're not willing to have an open mind goodbye I I I can't anymore I you know as anybody who is out here trying to help somebody else You have to make sure they're open to it. And then save yourself, especially us empaths, save yourself the time and energy and walk away. As much as that might hurt you and it might hurt the other person because they're not getting the help that you feel you can offer, they're not ready. They're not going to hear you. And then you're going to sit there taking on all their stuff that they're pouring out at you and not even listening to anything that you're trying to register in their brain And then you're the one that feels depleted. No. Just, I'm talking to myself here too. Don't do it. Just stop. And don't do it. This is why I'm not a full-time life coach. Because I've realized, especially for people with disabilities who feel they can't do anything, video is the way to go, whether it's Periscope, whether it's YouTube, whether it's anything like that. A lot of people will spend their time in secret Googling things. They might want to argue with themselves later, but that's not your problem. If you're making a video, what's the worst they could do is comment on it, how much you suck and how much they disagree with you. So what? Like, but this information has to be out there. That there are ways that you're doing yourself a disservice by what's going on in here and what's going on in here. And you're not even realizing it and expecting life to get better without doing the work in here and in here first. Like I said before, do that experiment again. I'm going to end this in a minute, but do that experiment again. Think about something unpleasant. Whether it's, actually, no. Make it something unpleasant going on in your life or a memory that you don't like. If you don't feel an effect on your body, you're a robot or an alien. I'm telling you right now. Your thoughts affect your body. And just that 
positive thought and this is why it doesn't work for people because they think 20 30 years of negativity is going to be stopped with one thought you have to retrain yourself you have to think so positive that those negative thoughts get overrun by that positivity and it's going to be strange and uncomfortable and you might sit there and think oh it's not going to work but it's up to you to persevere through that push past paralysis that is what i do mind body and spirit okay it might it might happen quickly if you're really committed to it but chances are you've lived in silence of negativity for a while and you're going to have to work really hard really diligently over and over and over again to even catch yourself cuz there's going to be times when the negative negative thoughts are going to come back you have to catch yourself and then when you feel lighter, it, it, you might not even realize it. Because, like I said, the old patterns might come back. So you might actually think you're in a bad mood. and But you're handling whatever situation you're going through a little down the road better than you would if you were to just continue to be somebody that's extremely negative. It, I'm, I promise you it has an impact. And nobody is punishing you or doing things to you. And your worries, especially in the disabled community. People have a lot of worries of what other people think and expect and different things like that. Okay, you can't change what somebody else thinks. So you have to learn to love yourself, even if somebody doesn't accept you. And then if people have like an actual problem with you, you have to learn not to care. And that comes with self-love. Okay, because there's going to be people who don't like you. There's people who don't like able-bodied people. So give me a break and get over it. Okay, <laughs> not everything is because you're disabled. Are there pieces of shit out there that are going to have a problem with somebody with a disability? Sure. But uh, whatever. You have to learn to make certain things a problem and yeah, exactly. Uh, that's you hit on that at exactly the right time because I was just getting into acceptance. Before anybody else can accept you, you have to accept yourself. And you have to Here's another misconception. I believe God sent me here disabled for a reason, okay? I don't believe that I was meant to be cured. Might I walk in like five years or whenever? I, I don't know, but I'm not spending my life pining over that. I accept my situation. I accept the fact that I believe God doesn't make mistakes. He sent me here for a reason, the way that I am, and what impact can I make on people the way that I am. Do I have flaws? Yeah, we all do. Nobody's perfect. I'm not preaching that I'm perfect and that you should all listen to me because I'm perfect. I'm just saying, if things are not working for you, and you're just doing nothing but complaining about them and saying how your life sucks and how you wish... So, so and so didn't make this mistake or how you wish that you know you could be cured or whatever and somebody else has to do it for you no if you first start with accepting yourself and your situation the way that it is then you'll actually see the changes that's where people get tripped up they think that it's defeat and you know just accepting mediocrity it's not Exactly. You don't have to, don't change for anybody else. Exactly. If, if you don't like the way that you're living, by all means, change something. Don't expect other people to change it for you. Change it. But never change for somebody else. Please. <sighs> I feel better. I've ended. 
But yeah, I, I just, none of us are powerless. If somebody can do TED Talks with three times less the physical mobility as me, or is it somebody with full mobility? Anybody can make an impact. There are people who are perfectly happy, myself included, with different abilities. I'm not saying even less that. We have different abilities because people do the same amount or more. <laughs> yeah, we have to hang out soon. There's people who do more with less. You have to work with what you have and you it all starts with gratitude. I don't know how else to get this through to people. You have to be grateful for the good things and then figure out in the bad things what's the lesson you need to learn so that you can let the bad things go and be in the past and be grateful for that lesson. Because eventually when you learn what you're meant to learn from it, it makes your life better. Like magic. But you put a lot of work up here and work in here into it. I can't take more people telling me that they're a victim. I can't. Are there some things that are frustrating to me and in moments and you know it may take me a while how to figure out my way around it or as an empath other people's feelings great on my nerves yeah but what I'm giving you are tools I'm not giving you how to be perfect I'm saying okay these things are gonna happen you're human you're not you're never going to not have negative thoughts. You're never going to not be in a sticky situation or be have something like terrible happen or hard to navigate through in life. But if your way is not working, there are other ways. And I don't want to hear the excuse of nobody taught me that. Well, I'm teaching you right now. I'm telling you right now. And chances are, if you know me, if we've actually spoken, I've told you this before and you're not listening and you're one of the reasons why I'm making this video. Because it's less direct and I'm not telling you by name. Maybe if you see that it's for everyone, you'll be more receptive to it. I don't know. It's my last dish effort. Uh, I don't know. All I know is it's what works for me. You have to seriously examine what's going on in your head for the rest of your life to change, even physically. Like I said, the, the thoughts have a chemical reaction to your body and it'll cause illness, it'll cause soreness, it'll cause discomfort. And the only way to truly fix that is up here. And that's literally all there is to it. It sounds simple, but it might not be easy. And I'm not saying that it is. I'm not gonna lie and say that it's easy. It might be easier for others but you can't look at other people's journeys and be like, oh, it's so easy for them. Because you have no idea. You have no idea what's going on in somebody else's head. They might make it look easy. Chances are it's not. It might be. But that doesn't mean yours, your situation is going to be easy. Because you might have a couple more decades of negative shit to go through up here. You might have people that you might ne necessarily be able to get away from. That you have to overcome their thoughts, especially in a disabled community. 
because some do need help and some people aren't actually ready to admit their independence. There's, there's fear there. I'm telling you, even fear. Fear is actually one of the biggest emotions that has a physical impact on you. It really does. And I'm not saying that you're going to be completely fearless, but you have to learn to cope with it and overcome it. And listen, I will help anybody who is ready, but I cannot have the same conversation for months and years and weeks and days. Well, days maybe. I'll give you that. If you're not willing to do the work. If you're not willing to actually see another perspective and actually try it. And you're just going to fire off excuse after excuse of why it's not going to work. There's nothing more I can do. There's nothing more I can do for you. Sorry. It has to come from with you. You can't make somebody make their own life better. Which is one of the hardest lessons I've learned. And I still find it hard because if I didn't. I wouldn't be trying to help people that are so resistant because I see their potential that they might not see. And I see the other end of where they're stuck. But the most I can do without depleting my own energy is sharing why what I do works. And if you want to take it, go ahead. And if you don't, that's fine too. But don't tell me there's only one way and the way that you've been doing for decades isn't working and you're just going to have to accept that because you don't. No, you don't. And that's all I guess I have to say. Like I said, I needed to vent and I figured I could do it in a way that will hopefully motivate somebody. Exactly. Because you don't, even if positive thinking doesn't change your medical situation, it does make dealing with it, with it easier. Exactly. Because you're not thinking clearly when you're worried or afraid. And I'm not saying you have to completely get rid of the worries if the situation is that bad, because that's extremely hard. But if you're not willing to take a step back and think of other ways to approach your situation after you've let yourself have a fit or be worried, you have to calmly analyze the situation and really come from a place of how can I tackle this? Because if you're tackling it from that fear-based place, you're just injecting more fear into the situation, whether it's health, whether it's, you know, financial, whether it's, you know, relationship whatever it is you're just injecting more fear into that and that's what's going to happen it's the law of attraction i don't care what faith you believe in the law of attraction is real you might not get into the woo woo side of it but thoughts become things they really do you know talk to anybody who anticipates something you know oh i'm i'm i don't sleep or i'm not gonna sleep or i hope i sleep and then they have a shitty night's rest and they wonder why so if you're talking about oh my life sucks and the doctor screwed up this or i you know should should have a life like such and such but i don't and i think i should should have it magically given to me no that's pushing against it and not even trying to have it everybody <laughs> thank you everybody has the potential 
to fix their life. Maybe it's with help, fine. Whether it's this video or a doctor you do feel comfortable with who's actually doing things to help you and not the same guy who's screwing you up and telling you that you're going to feel better and you don't. You, you have to look at what works for you. Not somebody else. And not what science says. If I listened to science just blindly, I would have been a vegetable from the day I was born. Because that's pretty much what doctors said might likely happen. Wouldn't have danced with Belle from Dancing with the Stars. Wouldn't have worked out with Polly from Big Brother and the Challenge. It's all up to you. So, if you found any value in this, I ask that you please share it. I'm going to try. I don't know how long I've been on, but I'm going to try if it's within the allotted time to put it up on YouTube if I can figure that out because I really want people to see it. And if you have any questions, you can follow me on Twitter, find me on Twitter at Marissa Molesky. Um otherwise, I'll talk to you guys in the next video and I'm going to go stretch and do some meditation breathing and keep myself calm <laughs> and get rid of other people's frustrations that made me kind of crazy enough to make this video. No, but really, I hope you guys found some value in this and I'll talk to you soon.